here at the Chicago Drum Show with the one and only Paul Francis. How hey, are you, sir? I'm, I'm great, Mike. How are you? It's good to see you again. It's good to see you. And you've got your own thing going yep, now. Yep, yep. Got our own uh, symbol company. It's called Royal Symbols. It's been in existence for um, a little over a year, year and a half now. Uh, I partnered with... Um, you know, a very good friend of mine that I had worked with at Zildjian, Sarah Hagen, mm -hmm. and it's just the two of us. We have a little facility in Hanover, Massachusetts, about 1,500 square foot. Um, it's essentially an industrial yeah, garage so you're not bay. Gar you're not your own garage. You, you right. Have a uh, yeah, I moved out of the garage at home into mm -hmm. this uh, facility. We've been in there, um, again, a little bit over a year, and, and we're just... Um, you know, we're making some great symbols. Beautiful, beautiful yeah. pies. Now, Paul, everybody knows, worked for the Big Dog Zildjian for many, many years and was responsible for all kinds of great developments in their symbols. And you got to think, I, like I do, that's a good thing that these smaller, younger boutique companies are coming up. It's good for the customers, isn't it? it? It's very, very good for the customers because um, what, what had been seen, you know, probably over the last five, six years is that more drummers are really interested in having things kind of more tailored to them personally and we noticed Sarah and I noticed that you know people were drummers were uh, seeking that out and um, you know we kind of grasped on that when we started together and not only are we doing that uh, for individual orders but also for the brick and mortar stores that uh, carry our symbols now so yes we're going to you know here's your first order of six symbols or whatever and this is what we recommend but you know, after playing them and selling them, if you want uh, to tweak them a little bit more to your region, mm -hmm. that that's what we're all about. So it's a basically a custom shop. It's a custom shop all the time. Every single order that comes in is made to order. There's no inventory. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's wonderful. And also, you answered my qu next question would be about dealers. You're using dealers, too. Yeah. Sarah and I both grew up um, at a drum store. I grew up at Desenzo's Drum Shop in Quincy, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and she grew up... Um, at Center Street Drums in Brockton, Massachusetts. And, you know, going there and studying drums and being able to see the gear and try the gear. And it was, it goes beyond just the cymbals and, and the drums. It goes to the drumming community. It's a network. And it's, it's a, a network. So we want to go back and, and support the brick and mortar stores that still exist. Right. Yeah. And, um, you online as well, or it's all through brick and mortar? It's, we, we're not selling through our website yet. We're, we're trying to get up um, just T-shirts and hats, mm -hmm. um, but it's really brick and mortar what I we want to do. Know, that's the business model. When I had my company, I always liked the brick and mortar thing. That's what they do. Yeah. I wasn't a retailer. I was a symbol manufacturer. Yeah. Yep. So yep. let them do what they do. Yeah. If there's some wacky custom order that, like, a store wouldn't carry mm -hmm. then then we will do it direct but mm -hmm. if there's some something that uh, somebody contacts about and I know that I made it and it's at a store that's close to that drummer we send them there and we send them you know a, a clip that we've made or the store has made mm -hmm. and say this is what we think that you're looking for speaking of clips that's something new in the last 20 years oh yeah I remember when I remember you no one's going to buy symbols online. The the sound quality is not going to be good. Somebody wants to try it, and a lot of the brick and mortar stores saw the future, and they embraced that. And they, you the know, smart they, ones did. They 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 got pretty much put together recording studios and video studios, and they make some really really great videos. I mean, I'm just going to shout out to Jim Pettit for doing it. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, he was he was really the. Uh, Pioneer of he was. Doing well, he that. had symbols only before him. Okay. But they only did audio. That's yeah. Tony oh. Costello. Oh, yeah, okay. And he started it, and then everybody sort of went, hmm. Jim was the one who said, man, we could add video to yeah. this yeah. and really make it work. He's probably the largest symbol dealer in the world. Yeah, he's he's got a lot, and I know... Um, I'm, it's great that he's in your corner, man. Yeah, and Sh Shane uh, up at Drum Center of Portsmouth, I've known mm -hmm. Shane for a long, he's long great time. He's um, You know, a lot of the smaller dealers... Uh, like Wooden Weather out in Western Massachusetts, Junk Rock Drums. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of some other dealers, you know, I'm putting together the first order for Pro Drum, stuff like that. In L.A.? See, you're an industry guy. You know all these people. Some of the smaller new symbol companies, because there's a dozen of them, probably ten of them here, they don't really have the option to go to dealers. I mean, a dealer yeah. can only handle a certain few brands. Right, right, right. And you have the reputation and the knowledge, and they know you from years ago. 
I still have to make good sounding cymbals though. I don't have that safety net of a, of a huge brand anymore. So yes, they know me and, and they'll take my phone call, but I still have to make still an exceptional deliver. product for them. Well, you always have made exceptional products and I know you're continuing. I love your pies. I've played most of them in the booth. Thanks, Mike. I'd play any of them on a gig. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're one of the best. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Appreciate you. I absolutely love playing drums and I couldn't imagine uh, not having that in my life. And I really, uh, if I could fac help facilitate that and have an impact on your life so that you can play drums, that means the world to me. Michael Vosbein back at you at the world famous super hip ultra cool Chicago drum show with my long standing pal, long standing man about Ludwig <laughs> for his entire career, loved by the whole industry, Jim Catalano. How are you doing, buddy? Good to be back. Good to see you again. Yeah. Now, you're not at Ludwig anymore. You've no, retired. But, you know, but I'm still part of their legacy. There you and I'm certainly friends, are. I'm friends with everybody there. Yeah, and you are Ludwig to a lot of people. And uh, you've been teaching at Notre Dame? Yeah. That's a nice... For uh, uh, seven years of teaching, but five years of teaching during the day uh, before I was teaching at night. You know? Right. And so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I reinvented myself as a corporate marketing and sales guy for the Ludwig Drum Company into a college percussion teacher. Good for you, man. Yeah. yeah, of course you've been a drummer your whole life. Yeah, that's the thing that's so amazing is during the, my 41 years in the music industry, I never stopped playing. And I never stopped learning and keeping up with the techniques. Here, here, man. Same and, here. And so here I am, you know, when I retired, it's like, wow, I have, uh, I have another career here. Good for you. Yeah. And you said something I've quoted many times. You, because we've worked in the industry, we know the legends, we mm -hmm. know the giants, and we're good musicians, but we know the giants. And yeah. you told me once, you said, you know, I'm a pretty good vibes player, <laughs> but I know Gary Burton. Yeah. <laughs> right. I use that line all the time. Yeah. I'm a pretty good drummer, man, but I know. Yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah. And, you know, and that it, it helps keep you humble and stuff. But it also, you know, they, they sort of set the pace or the tone of, you know, what it takes to be a good a good musician, to fit in with the band. That's the most important part. You know, I know there's a, you know, in today's t music on vibes or even on, on drum set. Yeah, you play both. Th there's there's so much busyness today, you know, just all sorts of stuff. I don't really do that. Same here. And uh but does anybody call you to do that? I've never no. been asked. In fact, hey, Michael, if, could you play a lot busier, please? No, if I Said did no that, ever. I wouldn't get the calls that I get anymore. It's that simple. You know, there's a joke about that. Guys auditioning for a gig, and they say, okay, can you play me like a, a samba pattern with the right hand? Say, yeah, okay. How about a little cross, you know, partito alto with the left hand? Yeah, okay, I got it. Maybe a bayon with the right foot? Okay. Now, how about some left foot clave? guy goes, oh, shit, okay, give me a second. <laughs> and he gets it, and he says, I got it, I got it. He said, yeah, you got it. He said, you have the gig? He said, do I get the gig? He said, no, that's why we got rid of the last gig. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I keep, I think I've said this to you, too. I keep trying to make sure that I'm a work in progress. Mm -hmm. I'm just running short on time. I hear you. Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking the other day, when people watch the videos that we do, and a lot of us are doing them, they're free. Yeah. But they're really, the people who watch it are paying in the most precious commodity of all yeah. that they can never regain, and that's their time. Yeah, 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 exactly. But I love being part of the, you know, the business, even in my own little way. And, of course, now I'm, at, uh, I'm in the stage of life called thinning the herd. Okay? So I'm looking at some of the snare drums and, and mallet instruments and things that I own. I say, you know, I, 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 I need to... I need to get rid of this stuff. We're all doing that. <laughs> yeah. You reach a certain age. As my friend said, you have aging drummer syndrome. So what's that? He said, well, you have more gear than you'll ever use again. Yeah, And exactly. you don't want to get rid of it. I used to use three or sometimes four kits in a day. Yeah. And that, I don't even want that to happen anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So what do you do with all this stuff? Yeah. So, yeah, you bring it, you sell it, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know. And that's you, why you're here. Yeah. You sold a bunch of snare drums yesterday? Yeah, about four or five yesterday. And you've got a lot of swag, too, official stuff that you collected yes, over the years. Yes, I have what's called show shirts. There you go. Okay, now, show shirts, that's where, you know, you're an employee of the company, and you say you have NAM show, and you get a shirt for each day of the show. Oh. Multiply that times 
30 years, 30 36 years. years. Yeah, wow. Okay, and then that's NAMM show. Then you got Frankfurt, and then you got the Percussive Art Society Convention. <laughs> and, and, so, and then there was Summer NAMM for a while. And so all of a sudden you have a buildup of all these shirts, and there's not enough days of the year. <laughs> to wear them all, and nor do I want to go everywhere with Ludwig plastered on my back. Right. You know. So it's time to thin the herd. Yeah. And there are a lot of people who will cherish that. The funniest part is I had a lot of shirts that had my name on them. Okay. I, I sold those here two years ago. I was surprised that I sold them because they had my name right, on them. Right. People didn't buy them because they were mine. They bought them because they were drummers named Jim. <laughs> and, and so it was, just, it was just the luck of That's the draw. That's hilarious. Yeah, because typically an autograph is worth less if it's got your name on Like yeah. if, if Magic Johnson wrote an autograph and he said, hi, Jim, yeah. it's worth less because <laughs> only a guy named Jim wants it. That's right. But you have a good uh, name a lot of people have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and then even the T-shirts. You know, I've saved all these T-shirts over the years. So I have T-shirts going back to the 80s. You know, 90s, obviously, you know, through the 2000s, and and uh, it's just nice. I, I don't have room for them. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Now, you got to feel that, uh, you know, the industry used to be dominated by several large brands. Ludwig, yeah. one of them, certainly. Now we have 150 drum companies. Mm -hmm. There's 10 or 12 cymbalsmiths here. Yeah. That's got to be good for end users, don't you think? I Musicians, think so. let's not call them end users. You know, I'm next to a cymbal company, a, a new brand. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to mention it here. However, you know, sometimes when you're next to a symbol company, it's sort of like, oh, it's the kiss of death because they're going to be crashing, and it's going to. But I have to say, these symbols that are really priced quite reasonably, are they sound very good. I've been looking at that man. They're making them with care. The edges are thin. They're musical. They're mm -hmm. responsive, and they're not a fortune. Yeah. And well, a lot of them don't have dealers in the middle of it too. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, they can't really. Then the dealers can't take a hundred brands. Yeah. So they're selling direct, and they're. But it's a yeah. good thing for. I, I think for you know, drummers. in the beginning of my career, 1978, I think there was basically let's just say six major drum, six drum companies. Okay, mm -hmm. there was you know in size, there was Ludwig, mm -hmm. then about half was Slingerland, mm -hmm. then then Rogers, mm -hmm. then Gretsch, mm -hmm. then Premier, mm -hmm. and Sonar. Right. Okay. And we've come a long way, baby, since then. And that's got to be good for consumers. Yeah, I would say. Drives the industry. New products drive the industry. Yeah, always. All right, brother. Good to see okay, you again. Good seeing Thank you, you too. for your time. All right. Hey, pleasure to be here. We'll I'll talk to you soon. Good luck to okay, you. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. My name is David Victor. I'm general manager with the Craviato Drum Company. We wanted to offer a one-ply, solid-shell product but we wanted it to stay true to our mission of offering handmade drums of uncompromised quality built here in the USA. So take a listen to our Center Stage Series drum set. Hi, Michael Bosby. I'm back at the show in Chicago with my good friend Gary Astrich. How are you, brother? Michael, I'm great. You had a wonderful presentation yesterday on Thank you. Ringo's Beetle Kids and Ringo and the new book. And the new book. The new book is wonderful. Tell them about the book. Well, uh, it's a book that I did in collaboration with Ringo, and it's uh, titled Beats and Threads. So the book uh, encompasses uh, Ringo as a child from when he had a first, his first interest in drums and drumming to his first drum, all the way through to the end of his career with the Beatles. And we go through all the details of historic facts, a lot of cool backstories, and tied in with that, is his uh, wardrobe. The threads. Yeah, so anything from like the collarless suits to the it's Beetle so boots. It's so cool, man. It's iconic. Yeah. When you look at it, you remember him wearing those things as yeah. soon as you see them. And <laughs> the clothes still fit him. And they still fit him. Yeah, they still fit him. There's a wonderful story about him getting the jacket back from uh, uh, Abbey Road, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was lost to a girlfriend somewhere along the way. And yeah, he was engaged. Uh, they broke up. Uh, he had uh, left some things behind and mm -hmm. um, never thought about it. And she auctioned it off some years later. And uh, a person bought it, hung on it to it, and actually displayed it, you know, to people uh, in a very professional way. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, Team Ringo heard that the jacket was um, being shopped around uh, to, to auction houses. So I knew the person and I was told, um, hey, see if you can get him to do the right thing. And it all worked out and Ringo got it. And he did, it. he got it back. Yeah, he got it back. And it still fits him. Still fits him. That's amazing. Yeah. 
Well, Gary's modest. He's not going to tell you, but his interest was in the Beatles and Ringo's kids, especially, and Ringo as a drummer. But you kind of took it upon yourself to curate all that stuff and figure out what he played, where and when. And Yeah. Well, that was the- part of, like, uh, leading up to it. And there's a lot of people, you know, who did research, too, you know, that, mm-hmm. that, that I could uh, uh, draw from. But in the end, it was um, a passion and a lifelong hobby, and it just turned out to be... Uh, uh, what would you say? Uh, opportunity, you know. It, yeah, but you came from the right place. You put that website up, Ringo's Beetle Kits. Right. Dot com. dot com, and did all that without even knowing Ringo. No, and and my thought then was, okay, I got a lot of hard, verified information, you know, about all the Ringo kits that he had, and, and my thought was, if if someone else out there wanted their Ringo kit, they could see how many, what he had, and they could select, and they had the blueprint to know what to go after. But then Ringo got hip to it, and met you, and realized here's a guy who just loves me, loves my stuff, and in. Wants to share it with the world. Yeah, so and, and it, it, you guys became friends. Yeah, and be, because it, it was a long process of, um, you know, uh, Ringo's well protected. You know, he's a very well, he tight inner circle, and so it was like it started out with a proving ground. Mm-hmm. But I never, you know, asked for anything. I always kept my head down, just did what I was asked to do, and that just led to other projects. That's what I meant. You came at it from the right direction. Your yes. heart was in it. And you weren't out to capitalize on anything in any way. Yeah. And still today, same thing. Still not. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's beautiful, man. Yeah. So tell them the name of the book again. Beats and Threads. Beats and Threads on uh, Ringo's Beetle Kits. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. Gary Astridge. Thank you, brother. Nice seeing you, Michael. Safe travels. Okay. All right. Hey, back at you from the Chicago Drum Show where I have Kevin Feeney from Creative Percussion. Correct. And you have some very interesting products there, Thank you. man. They're not symbols per se, but they could be symbolish. Ish, yes. Tell me about your brand and what you're up to. Uh, well, we pretty much make noise toys and, and dampeners and cymbals and gongs and whatever you can, whatever I can think of. Um, we're up to probably 500 different combinations of products. And how long have you been doing this? Seven years. And you're located where? New Hampshire. Website is? Uh, CreativePercussion.net. This is great. You having fun at it? Yeah, I love it. Absolutely. I get to do it full time, seven days a week. That's terrific. Yeah. So you started off as like a little hobby business and it's growing um, into yeah, a real... Yeah, I've dabbled in this my whole life. My dad was a drummer, so um, mm-hmm. I had I used to build drums and then a drum building became very popular. So I just got out of it. And uh, then I got back into this stuff with rods and beaters. Uh-huh. And we're a million products and you know beyond Good that for you now, and you're so. making very creative stuff and you're using you. a lot of stainless steel just regular steel steel yeah and and how do you work steel uh, pretty barbarically <laughs> well symbols too you know, yeah the, yeah I, a pretty barbaric it, most thing. of my stuff I'm not I've been a cabinet maker uh, carpenter my whole life and a drummer uh, so I didn't know anything about metal so I just treat it like wood really yeah so I just use my whatever I do for wood I do on that and so there are a lot of thin plates, odd shapes, and stackers. Yep, hammered both sides usually um, to keep them, you know, always different. And you now, know, what does hammering do to to steel? Uh, it brings out the for my steel. It brings out the tone. Uh, it, it allows space between the plates. Um, on symbols, it helps me. I start with flat sheet, and mm-hmm. it helps me, uh, you know, get the shape. And Gongs. when you say my steel, there's steel and then there's steel and then yeah, there's different steel. types of steel. I mean, mm-hmm. people always say that it, you know, oh, that's stainless. Well, it's not stainless. It's it's mild steel. It's much different. If you before the heat treatment, it sounds like crap. Mm. So the heat treatment brings out the tone, uh, especially after you hammer it. So there's a lot to it. I learned a lot. I've never worked with metal until 2019. It sounds very similar to symbol work. Yeah, it's I'm heat. gonna take a course with uh, Mike Mangello. Uh, and see that side of it, the, the actual side of symbol smithing would be kind of mm-hmm. cool. So, very cool. And then you buy what do you buy? Raw sheet metal? Sheet, or? yep, sheet steel. Yeah, I have a very small shop, so I have them cut it up into squares for me, so I can work it. And I met your wife last night. She works with you. She's it's a the family business. Yeah, it's just me and her. That's beautiful. Man. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. Well, I wish you a lot of luck with the product. Thank it's been great meeting much. you and hanging with yeah, you and your wife. And. Pleasure, uh, man. Continued success. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Awesome.
back at you at the Chicago Drum Show, and we have found the rarest of commodities at a drum show, and that is what? Silence. <laughs> you bet, man. <laughs> Steve Seifried, welcome to the Chicago Drum Show. Thank you. You're one of the new breed of cymbalsmiths out there, which I'm delighted to see. It's great for the consumers. Tell me what got you involved in this. Yeah, um, I've always been a cymbal geek. Uh, just, I just love the amazing sounds that can come from that instrument specifically. Um, and just been into working with my hands and working on instruments and stuff. So I kind of put the two together, and uh, now I can try to achieve all of those wonderful sounds I've heard over the years. How'd you learn to hammer a cymbal? Um, well, like you're saying, a lot of there's a lot of uh, you know people kind of up and coming. Um, what's interesting is it's kind of a community of, That's of artists. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been teaching myself as well as learning from some of the more veteran guys out there. That's terrific. You know, I never looked at our competition as anything other than resources and friends when I was in the cymbal <laughs> industry because it's a very small industry and we're yeah. all in the same boat. So that's great. There's a lot of camaraderie there. Huh? Mm -hmm. All right. And where are you located? I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay. And what's your brand? Seifried Symbols. And is there a website? Yes. www.seifriedsymbols.com and that's S-E-I-F-R-I-E-D. And hopefully you know how to spell symbols, C-Y-M-B-A-L-S dot com. S-I-M. <laughs> so how do you, uh, what's the process? You're not casting. I'm not casting. Um, That's so, dangerous shit, man. Yeah, I've heard too many stories. Yeah. Uh, I will let the experts do that. So I'm letting the, you know, the, the expert, uh, experts in Turkey do that for mm -hmm. me. Uh, so they're Turkish them, blanks. Mm-hmm. And send it my way, and then all of the making it into an instrument uh, mm -hmm. is happening on my end. And what are you going for? You, do you say you have a palette of sounds you go for, or are you just looking for new stuff all the time? Or how does that... Yeah. How many model series do you have? Uh, I don't really do series, um, because I feel like even if you try to make it the same, it's, it's, gonna, it's not going to be the same. It's handmade. It's, it's handmade. That's part of the beauty of it. Um, so I'll just... I'm just going for kind of all of the sounds, um, but more centered around the jazz tradition. Um, and it doesn't have to be just for jazz, but right. the more expressive, uh, washier, thinner, you know, that kind of thing, as opposed to something that cuts there, through. Right. We used to think of it as a cushion that the band sits on. Yeah. I thought of it as carpet, that there the music is all above. And it warms the mids up, and it's yeah. not something that pierces and smacks you in the head, but something that warms everything and gives you some cushion to play on. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Man. I haven't encountered anybody else with that philosophy yet, so that's very cool. Do you make flat? You brought a flat with you. I brought you. a flat with Hold me. Hold that up. Let's see. There I'm you a go. Big fan of flat rides. You know, whenever we would, dealers never would order flat rides or sizzles, and whenever we went to trade shows, they were the first ones to sell. Okay. So the flat ride's a beautiful thing. Yes. This is, one, this is part of what got me into this is, a beautiful flat ride we had at, at my college. Yeah. Um, man, I would just I would just hit that. And the just one everybody listen. talks about is the old uh, Now He Sings, Now He Sobs, Chick Corea, okay. you know that album? Yeah. With Roy Haynes playing a flat ride. I think it's a Peisty mm -hmm. from way back. Yeah, but I believe so. It's a certain sound that people dig. It's shimmery and wistful, sort of, and, yeah. and uh, a lot of high end. Not a bell, of course, no bell. but you're not looking for that. Great for bass solos. And, oh, yeah. Uh, bass players love it. And as a bass player myself, I love it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so you're a bass player, too? Mm hmm Yeah, right. I have a degree in jazz saxophone. You did, you're a saxophone player, too? Yeah. All right, so you're a schooled musician. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Man. So, yeah, it's, and it's been fun from a gear perspective to play all those instruments because, you know, uh, a drummer on a jazz gig is the only drummer on the jazz gig. Right. But if you're playing bass, you can check out the drummer who you're playing with or mm -hmm. you're playing sax, then there's a drummer playing with mm -hmm. you, and you can learn all these different guys and, and their different playing and their different sounds that they achieve with their mm -hmm. equipment and their different approaches. So I feel like in that way, being something other than a drummer has taught me a lot more about drums. So that's cool. At the end of the day, we're in the sound business making music. Yeah. And anything that can facilitate that. All right, well, thanks for stopping by and talking to me. Thank you. Good luck to you with your company. Thank you very much. Drummers seeking a quick and easy way to muffle bass drums on the fly, look no further. Muff Phone offers an effective way to instantly dial in your sound in just a few seconds while seated at the kit. Find out more at muffbone.com. All right, man, back at the Chicago Drum Show with my new friend... Ryan McKay. Ryan McKay, who has a interesting company. Tell us about it. Ah, uh, Bothered... Well, 
going to be looking there at it is. bovid percussion. So doing uh, rawhide heads of pretty well all types, calf, goat, camel, whatever. Camel? Yeah, you end up using that on the snare sides. Um, because it's real thin? Yeah, it can be shaved thin. Um, no kidding. Yeah, old school, way back in the day, they would use like unborn fetal slunk calf. And you can still get it, but it's pricey. It's super pricey. How did you get involved in this? Uh, back 07 to um, 09, I worked retail at a store in Toronto, uh, sold drums. Oh, I know those guys, Doug yeah. and, uh, and Doug and Paul. And Paul. Yeah, yeah, great guys. But um, yeah. yeah, I ended up taking over their repair work and. Um, they do a lot of percussion repair and then um, a lot of vintage stuff. So I eventually kind of learned how to tuck there and kept doing it for myself over the years. You were a drummer and, from the get-go, though. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. You know, I've been drumming since mid-90s kind of mm -hmm. thing when I was a kid. And, um, yeah, taught myself over the years and kept doing it for myself, got a bit better at it, and then eventually kind of decided, man, uh, they sound great, they look good, people keep complimenting them. Mm -hmm. There's not really many people left doing it, you know. Right. Stern's still in the States, um, makes great stuff, but he services mainly the orchestral market. A um, couple guys overseas, you know, one guy out in um, Australia, so yeah, there's not a ton of representation right. for well, that's good. It's, yeah. It's called hitting them where they ain't. Yeah, and then trying to do some uh, different things with it. Um, multiply, hide heads. How do you do a multiply head on a calf? Um, it's or tricky. <laughs> You'd essentially just have two sheets, cut them to the exact same size, and then hope that they kind of self-adhere a bit as you're tucking, or... You just tuck them together, not yeah, glued together. Anymore. Not glued together. Um, in the worst case scenario, I end up tucking one head normally, and then putting another sheet down, and then tucking over that and around. Wow. So um, hopefully, if all goes well, they tuck as one unit. If not... Mm -hmm. It takes a bit longer, but do them twice. But um, yeah, I can do two ply calf, two ply goat, but can mix things. You can do a gamel, you know, a uh, ply of goat, ply of camel. So you do custom orders, or you? Yeah, I'll do custom orders, uh, custom sizes. How do people contact you? Um, either through my website, bovidpercussion.com, or honestly, um, the thing that most of my work gets posted on is uh, my Instagram, and all of my socials are at bovidpercussion. Pretty mm -hmm. simple. Do you have dealers or you work? Um, I've got some stuff out at Nelson's in um, Nashville. In Nashville, and actually talking at this show, um, sounds like Nebraska and Philly, or some stores in Nebraska and Philly are going to be picking up some stuff. But, um, you know, a lot of it's direct to consumer. Mm -hmm. You know, um, stores don't often want to carry, you know, a load of expensive 22. Well, they can't carry everything. Yeah. Now, how does the price compare to a, like a 14 inch snare head out of. Uh, Remo Aquarian Evans yeah, I mean, versus a, a I'm one Cana of yours. I'm Canadian, so um, but I do I don't know what a 14 inch ambassador goes for down here. <laughs> I don't either. Um, in Canada, it's about 25, 30 bucks Canadian. Most of my business is in the states, so for a 14, I generally charge 90 direct to customer. 90 bucks? Yeah. So I mean, it's not cheap, but. Um, they last. They that was my next question. Yeah. They hold up, don't they? They hold up. Um, I'm doing them on solid aluminum hoops as opposed to almost everyone else doing um, calf heads is doing them. So that's on. why they're more money. You're buying the hoop. Oh, the, the hoop's one of the biggest expenses for me. Um, buying the extruded aluminum, having it rolled, having it welded competently. But at the end of the day, it's, it's a way better product. So when that head is done, you throw the hoop away too? Nope. No, no, that's the actual hoop that it's uh, tucked on. Okay. Yeah, solid so aluminum. So you would send that back and get a new head? Oh, yeah, if someone were to bust that, um, yeah, you can send it back to me, and then I can give you a new head at a discount. Because, yeah. yeah, so it wouldn't behoove you to throw the whole thing away. You still got No, it. no, no. Yeah, the, those hoops will be around for hundreds of years if nothing accidental happens to them. Now, what kind of drummers prefer these heads? It's mainly guys that are doing a lot of recording. Um, they're... Obviously, they're happiest in studio and kind of a stable environment, but um, I've certainly used them live plenty of times. Um, I tech for a guy that's had three 20-inch uh, goat on the front of his bass drum for the past two years. I saw you had one that had the, the, um, the fur on it. Yeah, the, for the bass drums, um, bass drum resos, the fur works out really well. 
Um, a, it looks cool. It but, looks very cool. Yeah, it looks cool, but um, it also adds mass to the head, so it drops the pitch a bit. And then the fur acts as natural muffling, so you can generally get away with nothing inside the drum. Mm. And so then you've got the option of big booming tone or dialing it back a bit. Now, how about tuning? They used to be known as being temperamental because uh, of heat and moisture. Yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll respond to the environment, but it's not as severe as most people think. And these days, most people don't have any experience with it. But um, right. the thinner the head, the more it'll change. But mm -hmm. um, that's also one of the reasons I use aluminum. Because um, at least with aluminum, it's super stiff, super stable. So as they rise and fall with humidity and temperature, they tend to do it in pitch. You know, it kind of goes up right, nice right, evenly. Right. Whereas with wood, there's a torsion on it. It might, you know tension a little more on one side than the other and that's where it becomes kind of a nightmare just the flexibility of wood hoops tuning it up on a drum is no different than any other hit right no no and for the most part all my stuff's ready to play out the box preformed with collars um and you still have to tune it up though right? yeah you still have to tune it like any regular head i guess when i said rim i meant collar the, the yeah. collars right? yeah because i um, would replace the head on keep the collar yeah or the, the, i think what you're thinking is the actual flesh hoop itself flesh hoop okay yeah. i don't know the nomenclature yeah no, not many people have experience with flesh or hide heads these days so but um and when i where get did you say you were living i'm in canada um really close to niagara falls oh, okay I, 25 minutes over the border across from Buffalo. So are you able to drive your stuff over the border to ship it? Or um, no, you have I'm to ship from I'm, home? Yeah, I generally ship from home. It's not that bad, um, especially, you know, if you're ordering more than one head. But mm -hmm. um, generally it's UPS um, out to, like, California, West Coast, mm -hmm. four to five business days. Yeah. You know, East Coast usually a bit quicker, mm -hmm. two to three business days. Give them the name and the company and your whole thing again. For sure. Uh, Bovid Percussion. Um, BovidPercussion.com. At Bovid Percussion on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all of that. And yeah. Anyone? And this man will hook you up, man, with that Absolutely. sound that you can only get from natural heads. Absolutely. Thanks for coming by. Nice to meet you. Oh, thanks for having Good me. Good luck with your company. Many, we'll many thanks. We'll talk soon. Safe travels. You too. Thank you, man.